Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. Today in part 7 of Mastering Multi-Threading series, we will unravel the mysterious life cycle of a thread. So before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell icon. That way you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, without any further delay, let's get started. Thread life cycle in C-Shop. Threads have their own life cycle. They fall different states so where they are at any given time. When a thread is first created, it's in, in the unstarted state. It's like a newborn waiting to begin its journey. When we use the start method on the thread, it becomes runnable. This means it's ready to go, but it hasn't started running yet. It's like a runner waiting for the starting gun. After the CPU gives it some time, thread starts actively executing and its status changes to running. It's now in full motion, like a sprinter dashing down the track. If the thread encounters a situation where it needs to wait, trip or join another thread, its status changes to wait slip join. It's like pressing pause in the middle of a race. It can be brought back to the running state if a specific methods like pulse, pulse all are applied or if its slip time expires. When a thread completes its execution or is forcibly stopped using the abort method, it enters the stopped state. This is the end of the thread's journey, like reaching the finishing line. If the suspend method is used on a thread, it attempts to pause that thread's execution and its status changes to suspended. To get it moving again, we can use the resume method. It's like a hitting pause and then play on a video. Sometimes, a thread may need to wait for a resource or an event, like waiting for a locked resource or an input out operation to finish. In this case, it enters the block test where it patiently waits. It will continue when the resource becomes available or the input output operation completes. So that's the simple story of thread life cycle in Cisha. It starts unstarted, run through various states like a race and eventually ends its journey. Either when it finishes its task or encounters a stoppage. Thread state to know the state of a thread. Unstarted, running, bait slip join, suspended, and blocked, etc. Nothing but the thread state. But how to know what the state of a thread at any given time? It's very simple to identify. Use thread state property to get the thread state. That's what if you see, I have written thread state to public thread state, thread state, get. The thread state property uses enum thread state that represents these various stages of a thread during its life cycle. For example, I want to print thread state in console window. How we can print it? Just need to use the thread state property of a thread in console dot right line state. That's what I wrote. Console dot right line thread state thread dot thread state. It will give the state of the thread at that particular time when this statement is getting executed. Now let's see the thread state enum which is defined in the system dot threading namespace. It has ten elements: running, stop requested, suspend requested, background. Unstarted, stopped, wait slip join, suspended, bot requested, and aborted. Running means the thread has been started and not yet stopped. Stop requested. It means the thread is being requested to stop. It's used for internal purpose by .NET run. Suspended requested means thread is being requested to suspend. Background. It depicts that thread is being executed as background thread. Unstarted. It depicts unstarted means the system dot threading dot thread start method has not been invoked on the thread. That's what it it's not started. Stopped. It means the thread has a stop. Wait sleep join means the thread is blocked and this could be result of calling thread dot sleep join or requesting a lock. Suspended. It means the thread has been suspended. Abort requested means the thread dot abort method has been invoked on the thread. But the thread has not yet received the pending thread abort exception that will attempt to terminate it. And finally, aborted it means the thread state includes abort requested. The thread is now dead, but its state has not yet changed to the system dot threading dot state dot stopped. These thread state values are useful for monitoring and controlling the behavior of the thread in a multi-threaded application. As we already discussed that we can check a thread state using the thread dot thread state property and take appropriate actions based on the current state. Okay, 
let's switch to the visual studio and see all these things in action so here we are on visual studio here we are going to see the demo of the thread life cycle in c -sharp. for that what i have done i have created one console application thread life cycle in c -sharp. that has one program.cs program.cs file there is a namespace named thread life cycle day has one class named program that has main method which is an entry point of this application in this main method what i am doing i'm just printing this statement thread life cycle in c -sharp demo in, in console that's what i have written this statement Next, what I'm doing, I'm just going to create a thread. For creating a thread, I need to write this statement. Thread thread is equal to new thread, and here I'm going to pass this thread function in. Nothing but here my thread function. Then I'm just going to see what is the state of the thread right now when I have created an instance of the thread class. I'm just going to use the thread state property to print this state of the thread currently. So I'm just writing this statement console dot write line thread state thread dot thread state. Basically, this statement is going to get printed and the state of the thread will be on start because I have not applied the start method yet. Now, the next statement, I'm just going to apply this start method. And that's what I have written thread dot start. Basically, it will transition a state unstarted to the runnable state. Okay. Then what I'm doing, I'm just going to check and display the state of the thread. What is the state of the thread? So basically, when we are applying this start method, CPU will assign some time to this particular thread to get executed. Okay. So if I'm going to execute this statement, I will be getting a status as a running because CPU has already allotted some time to particular thread and it had started executing. That's what I'm getting this state as a running over here. Next, what I'm doing, I'm just going to make this main thread to sleep for 100 milliseconds. So that I'm just making sure that new thread has a chance to run. That's what I have written this state. Then I'm just printing this statement again. Console dot write line thread state thread dot thread state. Here it should be printed as a wait slip. Why I'm saying wait slip join? Because this I'm just printing this thread state. I have already started the thread, right? So it will go and execute this my thread function. My thread function, I have written one for loop, right? It will execute in loop and print this statement. Thread is running a step and whatever the i value that we are going to receive as a part of this for loop, I'm just going to concatenate with that and then printing console. Then I'm just making this thread to sleep for 500 milliseconds. This is a statement, right? This this time I'm just going to use thread state so it should get printed wait sleep join because I have made this thread to sleep for 500 milliseconds. Right? So it will be in sleep state. So when we are going to check the state of the thread, it should get printed wait sleep join. Okay. Now what I am doing, I am just going to make main thread to block for a while. That's what I have written thread dot sleep 2000 millisecond. Then finally what I am doing, I am just going to applying interrupt method on the thread. Okay. Basically it will be transition the abort requested state. Okay, so when we are going to apply this interrupt, right? So this my thread function that was getting executed, it got triggered this thread interrupted exception. This will be caught at catch statement. Then I'm printing this statement into window. Thread is interrupted and entering about requested. Finally, this statement is going to get printed. Thread is stopping. After interrupt, we will be getting these things, and then I'm just waiting for all the thread to finish. Right, so that's what I have written thread dot join. Finally, I'm just printing this statement thread state thread or thread state, and this statement get printed for with the stopped thread state. Okay, so now you have seen how I have written the code. Let me execute this program and see this output. Okay, so output got appearing to this console. See the first statement got printed thread life cycle in C sharp demo, right? Because I have written this statement thread life cycle in C sharp demo. This statement got printed. Then I have created an object of the thread. Then in the next statement, I am just printing what is the state of the thread. So right now the first thread state is unstarted. That statement got printed. Then what I have done, I have applied this start method. So this thread will be transition the state of unstarted to the runnable state. Okay. And then CPU will assign some time this particular thread and when we are going to check again what is the state of the thread 
so it should get printed running and that's what i got status as a running mode right now what i'm doing i'm just making the thread to sleep this thread nothing but the main thread right then this statement is going to get right so if you see thread is running a step number one because i have already invoked you start method right so this thread function is in action and one for loop statement got executed and then this thread was made to sleep for 500 seconds that time if i am checking in this position over here line number 28 what is the state of the thread so it thread got printed wait slip join because i made this thread to the sleep for 500 so that's what it got printed thread state wait slip join then i'm just again making this main thread to sleep for 2000 millisecond for a while and then finally what i'm doing i'm just applying the interrupt method of the my thread so what will happen when this thread function is getting executed that time i have applied this interrupt method so whatever the execution was happening will stop and throw the error that error i'm catching over here in the form of thread interrupted exception so this statement i'm printing into the catch block thread is interrupted and entering aborted about request that's what this statement got printed thread is interrupted and entry finally the finally block got executed thread is stopping and that's what it got printed thread is stopping and when this function get executed then it come over here then this statement is going to get printed thread state thread dot thread state okay so that is the simple thread life cycle in c sharp that i have shown you demo right so that brings me to end of my session to sum up we have demystified the thread lifecycle in C. I hope you now have a clear understanding of how threads evolve from birth to termination. That's all for this video, guys. If you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and colleagues, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already. Thanks for watching. See you next video.